Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, it says, Now faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith we understand that the worlds were, were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. Amen. This, this past week, there's been a lot of construction happening on the outside, and I thank you guys for your patience as you had to use the other entrances to come on in. How many of you liked what you saw out there as a platform has been raised? Amen. And it's all about, you know, the future growth of the church. There's a lot of work that still needs to happen, but we're going to finish it all before 2020. How many of y'all believe that it is so in Jesus' name? And, and there's a lot of work that needs to take place. And, and uh, for those that are involved in construction, that are working with us in the project, get all the sleep you can right now because in a little bit you're going to be working all the time. You're going to need it. Amen. But we, this past week they did the pouring of the concrete as they raised the, the foundation of the entrance, the new entrance area, three feet. And there was five steps going down, each poured with concrete. So the whole week, starting on, actually it started last week on Thursday, they began to frame the, the walls for where they were going to pour the concrete. They put a side framing, and then they put the other side framing, and they allowed the middle to be open so that on last Sunday we would have free access coming into the church and coming out. But as soon as service was over, they began to close up the wall and frame out everywhere they were going to put the concrete. So they began to frame it on Monday and Tuesday. They began to pour dirt to lift up the elevation, the gravel underneath it. They put the rebarb and, and they did all the forms on uh, Thursday. Friday, they did the inspection. We passed the inspection. How many know that it's, it's awesome when we pass? Amen. We passed the inspection. And then Saturday morning, they were pouring the concrete. And now we have the platform out there that you see today. And so that's why we couldn't come to the, 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 the main section because they, the, the, it's uh, still being prepared. We've got to put rails. There's still a lot of work that needs to happen. But thank God for the new construction. Amen. Amen. But see, before they could pour the concrete, they had to frame it. And the Word of God says that by faith... Our world is framed. And that's what I want to talk to you about, framing your world. Framing your world. Because you have everything that you have today according to your faith of yesterday. You have framed your world today. So if there's things that, that you like about what, where you are in life and what you're doing and where you're heading, that's all because of your faith yesterday. If you don't like some of the things that are going on in your life, it's all because of the faith that you had yesterday. Good or bad, you framed your world. Good or bad, you framed your world. And so that's what I want to talk to you about, framing your world, because our world is framed by the Word of God. Our world is framed by the Word of God. If you want to have victory, if you want to be a success, you want to have abundance, you want to have overflow upon your life, you want the glory of God and the anointing of the Holy Spirit to be upon you, it is all according to your, the way you frame your world by the Word of God. The Bible says everything that is seen was created by faith. It was all framed by faith. And so what was seen is because it was a release of faith that brought it into existence. The Bible says, here it says in verse 1, now faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So if you're believing God for something, that's where you need to use your faith. I don't know how I'm going to get there. I don't know what's going to happen in the future. So I use my faith to receive what I desire. I use my faith to reject the things I do not desire. 
If you don't have strength to do it in your, in your own capacity, that's what you need faith for. You need faith for health. You need faith for joy. You need faith for raising your kids. In every area, your world is framed by faith. Amen? And so we frame the, our world by the word of God, which is the truth. You have to get to a place where the word of God is the complete truth. I don't know about you. I just want the truth and nothing but the truth. Because there's so many lies that are presented before me. And as long as I put my eyes, if I put my eyes and listen to those lies that are put before me, I will begin to use my faith in a negative. Instead of receiving the promises of the word of God, I'll start accepting the negatives of the devil. And next thing you know, my life is put in a place of defeat instead of a place of victory. Because the Bible says the entrance of his word giveth light. And it's hard to walk along the path if you can't see. And so if you don't have the word of God, you don't know what is available to you. You might have hope. You might have desire. But without the word of God, you are, you are asking amiss. You are framing without a, a blueprint, without a floor plan. You are putting things where they should not be. That's why it's important that you receive the word of God. Amen. The word of God is truth. And when you receive the truth, the Bible says it will set you free. Amen. Amen. Our world is framed by the word of God. Amen. And so God's word is truth. Tell your neighbor, God's word is truth. I don't care what other people say. I don't care what, what the doctor says. I don't care what the politician says. I don't care what the economist says. Our world is framed by faith in the word of God. The word of God is truth. Amen. Say the word of God. It's truth. And that's where your victory is. When you hear the word of God, you have to begin to believe it. I'm not just saying hear it. you got to believe it. You got to be fully convinced that God's word is truth. So many people they they make room for the for the 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 reasoning of man. You get you get someone that that's that's newborn, excited, on fire for God, and you tell them that something's available for them through Jesus Christ, they just believe. They believe quickly. Because they, they know that if God could save their life, which they've received salvation, they know they could receive whatever the word of God says for them. So you have a, a man of God, a woman of God, a preaching truth to them. And maybe someone is sick, but they believe in Jesus Christ and in the power of God. And they're so excited about their salvation. And then that man or that woman of God begins to declare that by the stripes of Jesus, you are healed. And that the believers shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover according to the word of God. That man or that woman who, who just got saved will come to church, will come before that man or woman of God say, put your hand upon me because I believe as soon as you do this sickness is going to come off me they're, re they're ready to receive they're ready to receive they don't allow human reasoning because they just realize that if Jesus is strong enough to save them Jesus is able to heal them to restore them and change them completely in Jesus name Amen. somebody say truth but you take someone who's been in the way for a while Someone who's, who's been Christian for a while. Someone that has been in and out of the things of God. And instead of them believing the word of God, they make, they, they, they've added so many excuses to their journey. That instead of framing their world by the word of God, they, 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 got, they got one area that's strong, but the other areas are weak. Because they allowed the enemy... To compromise the word of God in their life. I want to let you know, you do not have to make excuses for God. When you receive the truth, you have to be totally convinced that it is the truth. You might be seeing something that's negative in your life, but understand that's a temporary condition. That's not your permanent destination. Your permanent destination is according to the word of God. 
And so God has declared things over your life through his word that you need to accept as your permanent condition. And don't allow the enemy to steal that word from you. You hold on to it no matter what it looks like it because God's word is assured. It will never, ever come back to him void, but it will always accomplish what it's sent out to do. And that's why you have to grab a hold of the word of God and listen to the voice of the Lord and not, uh, not allow the enemy to steal from you the word that God had already given to you. Amen. And so you frame your world. You believe the word of God and you frame your world according to the word of God. And as you frame your world according to the word of God, you will have whatever you say. You believe it, you receive it, and then you have to begin to speak it out. Look at your neighbor and say, tell somebody. You frame it by speaking it out into action. When I hear the word of God, you know, you have to understand the Bible says faith comes by hearing. And hearing, and hearing, and hearing the word of God. Some people, they, they come into, the, into a church like this and we preach about, about God's provision. And they, they hear it. And first they think, I, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. But then they hear it from multiple people. They, first, they, they might have heard it from pastor, but then they hear testimonies from their neighbor and their neighbor. And, and they're thinking, well, I don't know if I believe it. But then they keep on hearing it a little more and they, they begin to think, you know what, I need that. I, I think I need to believe that. If God could do it for that person, God could do it for me. Amen. And because of the testimonies and because of the constant preaching of the word of God that is solidifying the, 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 the seed of the word inside your life, you begin to believe it. Next thing you know, that person is beginning to declare it, that, that my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. They begin to declare that as I sow my seed, that God will bring it back to me, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. And next thing you know, instead of thinking about, oh man, woe is me, they begin to look at, I've been anointed by the Holy Ghost and I've been given the promises of prosperity by by God and his word, as I give, I shall receive. Hallelujah. If I sow little, I receive little. If I sow much, I receive much. The word of God says that, that he gives me the power to prosper. And so I take hold of that power right now. And I begin to give. I begin to serve. I begin to sow. And, and I give it all to the Lord. But the Lord is the one that brings back the harvest. Amen. Some hundredfold. Amen. Hallelujah. And so all of this is because I am fully convinced by the word of God. And so I begin to declare it. I begin to act it. I begin to believe it. And all I'm doing is I'm framing my world. I'm framing my world. I did not get here yesterday. This is my, the life that I'm living today has been all my life framing what I am today. I believe God's word. I speak God's word. I receive God's word. So when it shows up, I am not surprised. Do you think in the beginning when God said, light be, and light came into existence, do you think God said, whoa, I wasn't expecting that. When God began to speak everything into existence, you think anything that he spoke into existence, that he was like surprised, whoa, I wasn't expecting that to happen. No, he was expecting it to happen because even before he spoke it, he was fully convinced that it will come to pass. He had already framed, he had already received the, 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 the reality of everything that's seen. And the only thing that was waiting for it was for him to speak it out. And as he began to speak it out, he began to put the borders. I mean, he even spoke the borders of the water and the land. He began to put the borders of this world. And everything was created by the word of God. I want to let you know that same power God has given you. 
that same power to create your, your existence, to create your world, amen, according to the word of God. If you want to see a change in your life, begin to believe the word of God and speak it over your life. If you're believing God for healing, begin to speak it over your life. Begin to speak that your, your, your body is strong in the name of Jesus. If you get a bad report by the doctors, begin to come against it in the name of Jesus. Begin to command body parts to move in Jesus' mighty name. When, when we pray for people that have cancer, we don't say, God, give them strength to endure cancer. We, we tell cancer, cancer, get out of this body. We command you to die right now in Jesus' mighty name. You will not live in this body. Get out, get out, get out. Why? Because the Lord has given us that power and that authority. And so the only thing that needs to happen is we need to frame the world, amen, by faith. Hallelujah. If you are not speaking it, you have not received it. Amen. From the beginning of the year, what have we been talking about? The Lord gave us a word for 2019. We're going to build and we're going to bless. And as we received that word, the Lord began to solidify that word. He showed me a little, he showed me the, the oil that was in the woman's hand, the widow's hand. And she gathered a bunch of pots and as she began to pour, the oil did not cease. And the Lord told me, he says, every time you pour out, I will fill it back up. I grabbed a hold of that word. I begin to declare. What did I say? I got a bucket that doesn't run dry. Every time I pour it out, God keeps filling it back up. I didn't know what it looked like. I didn't know. I couldn't see it. Amen. I just knew by faith I have a bucket in the spiritual, uh, in the spiritual realm that receives earthly provision for the needs that we have. And it shall not run dry. And so I began to speak it out. I got a bucket. People looked at me. You're strange. That's okay. You're going to see the power of the word of God in action. I got a word from the Lord. Every time I pour out, he's going to fill back in. And we began to pour out. We've already spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on renovations. And there, the, 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 there's more coming in. There, there's, there's resources ready to go. And the only thing that we're waiting now is the time to get the work done. We, are not, we, are not, we have not picked up not one special offering. I didn't have to go in and do anything other than to use my faith so that the things that are seen are not built by the things that, have, that cannot be seen. Amen. The things that are seen are built by the things that cannot be seen. Amen. People will look at you crazy. Why? Because they don't know what it is like to live by faith. But you are the sons of God. You've been bought with the price, the blood of Jesus. Your name is written in heaven. The kingdom of heaven is open to you to live and to dwell and to walk in now. So why should you live according to the ways of this world when the kingdom's ways are so much greater than this world? Yeah. Hallelujah. And so your world will be shaped by faith. But you got to receive the word of God. Believe the word of God. And then you have to begin to speak it and act upon it. And as you do, you're going to see that your future is going to change. You're going to see that the things that you couldn't do yesterday, you will do today in Jesus' name. That there will be nothing that will hold you back in Jesus' name. Don't speak your fear. Speak your faith. Some of you do not have because you have not been asking. Some of you are afraid to use your faith because you think, well, I might be disappointed. Don't ever think that. God, God will always, not, not only will he, he, he will surprise you. The Bible says he does far greater than you can ask, think, or imagine. Amen. You have to begin to speak it out. Tell your neighbor, speak it out. Once you know God's word and once you know what he promises, speak it out by faith and receive it in the name of Jesus. Don't let go of it. Hold on to it no matter what it looks like. 
Hold on to your faith. Hold on to the framing of, the, of, of the, your world through the word of God. You might, you might be hearing bad reports from your, from your children. They go to school and the teachers are speaking negative reports. They, oh, the, your, your son just cannot learn like everybody else. He has a learning deficiency. He has issues with his, with his, his attention. All those negative things, begin to declare those things are dead in the name of Jesus. And begin to speak, my child shall, shall overcome. My child shall be, shall be at the top of their class in Jesus' mighty name. My child understands everything in Jesus' mighty name. What are you doing? You're using your faith to change the things that you see. Maybe your child has walked away from God. I don't, want to, I don't want to worship God. I don't want to know God. I don't want to go to church. I don't believe in God. That's when you begin to use your faith. Oh, not only are you going to know God, you're going to be a preacher. You're going to be a preacher. You're going to be a prophet in Jesus' mighty name. They might curse you in your faith. In your face, you should get excited. Praise the Lord. Look at that devil kick. But I'm telling you, that devil's going to go in the name of Jesus. For the Lord shall fill him with the Spirit, and he shall be used mightily for the glory of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Maybe there's something that's going on. Maybe, maybe you, you need a, a new vehicle, and for so long you've had the, a vehicle that doesn't work properly, but you don't have the money to purchase something new. You should begin to use your faith in the name of Jesus. I call in the resources in Jesus' mighty name. And watch what God will do. You could buy with no money. Did you hear me? You could buy with no money. The moment you get on over into the faith realm, there's no limits on your life. I've been saying this for a while. You know, we've been doing a lot in the ministry, and there's a lot more that I want to do. And some people are, have said, you know, that's just too much. You know, you need to slow down. But I'm thinking, man, I need to speed on up. When the Word of God says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, and I know I got the strength of Christ on my side, I need to start dreaming even bigger. I'm telling you, that bucket just got bigger. I'm telling you. That bucket just got bigger. Just watch what that bucket's going to do in 2020. Just watch. Hallelujah. You start using your faith for the things that you desire. How many know that God will give you your heart's desires? That's word. That's scripture. The only thing is somebody believes it and others don't. I believe in this church we are a bunch of people that just choose to believe God's word. Amen. We walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. Say, I believe. I receive. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And so it doesn't matter what you are missing in your life. It doesn't matter what brokenness might be going on. Maybe you're believing God for health. Maybe you're believing God of losing weight. Hallelujah. Begin to speak it in the name of Jesus. Maybe you're believing God for something personal for your family. Begin to use your faith. Begin to frame your world. Amen. And, and listen, here's the thing. I want you to understand something. you got to talk a big game. You have to be like a Holy Ghost bully. You have to be willing to speak things that other people can't see. And continue to speak it. Amen. They won't believe you, but it's not important if they don't believe you. The only thing is you have to be fully convinced. So that the enemy cannot rob you of the blessing that God is trying to get to you. When you use faith, you grab a hold of the thing that you, have, you desire in the spirit. And you make it your, yours, amen. Once you've asked in faith, you just begin to thank God that it's done. So that when it shows up, you still give them all the praise, but you're not surprised you were expecting it. Amen. How many mamas are here? Amen. When, 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 when the baby was in your belly and the time of delivery came, and your child got out of there, and they put that child in your arms. Did you look at that child and say, I wasn't expecting you. (laughs) 
you were expecting that child. I mean, you, I mean, the funny thing is you were, you were, you were not, you, you received that baby the moment you got pregnant. You started walking funny. One month pregnant, you're like, oh, my back hurts. You bought things for that baby. You made preparations for that baby. You had an expectation of when the baby was going to come. And then when the baby shows up, you don't say, oh, you know, I just wasn't expecting it. <laughs> that's the way you have to be with faith. I can't see it, but that's where I use my faith. I believe I receive in the name of Jesus. I shall, it, that baby shall come forth in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And so that when, when you see the expectations of your faith come into reality, into the physical, you could give God glory, you could give God honor, but you, you should not be surprised. You should not be surprised. There are so many blessings coming my way, and I thank God. I give God praise. I give God all the glory. But there's so many blessings coming my way that even when I see them in the physical, it's not like I want a new car at a, at, a, at a game show. I have the same Thanksgiving that I have today that I do when I see it in the physical. You have to understand, I already expect the victory. The only thing that's keeping me from seeing it in the physical is time. But the victory is already mine. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, give God praise.